Hello, World of Jake 2012 here, and today I'm going to be taking a look at my Nintendo DS games collection. Yeah, I know, it's been a while since I did a, a game collection, hasn't it? Yeah. The Nintendo DS, basically, it's a console. It's one of the most best selling, it's one of the best selling consoles of all time. It's like, I think it's the second best selling next to the PS2. But yeah, sold that many con sit sold that many copies, and, well, what do you expect? I mean, it's like, it's like a console with two screens, and it's like a pretty impressive idea, when you think about it. And then, yeah. And there was me thinking it would go on forever, but apparently it had been replaced by the 3DS, and then, there we go. I guess time really just, I guess with time go, comes change, and yeah. And I have a quite a big DS collection, yeah. I think it was bigger than my 3DS collection, yeah, it is, because the fact that yeah, I should probably look for some more 3DS games that aren't from Nintendo, because I seem to have so many Nintendo ones in my 3DS collection, but that's irrelevant. Let's take a look at the ones we have in store. Starting with the first one I have in the pile. Spectrobes. Now, this is a game that my brother used to play a lot. And, um... I don't really play much of it, but... I mean, it's a Disney game, but... Yeah. Mm. I was not really interested in these kind of games, mainly because they it take too long. But hey, on the plus side, they do come with these holographic cards. Yeah, they are holograms, and they have holes in them too, for some reason. I don't play Spectral, so if you know what these mean, um, please post them in the comments, and I might or might not read them. Yeah. yeah so I should probably, start, I'll probably see how, what, this, what the fuss of this game is about. Space Invaders Revolution. Yes. For some reason, published by Rising Star and distributed by Atari, for some reason. Yeah, and, basically, Space Invaders is basically... Why am I going to explain you what, what Space Invaders is? You all know what it is by now. You basically shoot... You basically, have, you're in a spaceship and you have these alien fleet trying to shoot you down. And, yeah, you have to shoot them. And that's pretty much it. You have to find the Earth from video games' oldest enemy. Oh, really? I thought Video Games Oldest Enemy was made back in 1972 when the Mac 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 Odyssey came out. Mm, I don't know. Although this came out in... 19 well, well, the original game came out in 1978, but mm, yeah, this this is a pretty good remake, too. I like playing it, and I... I mean, there's... I mean, with this game, there's two modes. There's the Old Age mode, or what was, was it? Is it? No, it's Classic Version, even. Why do I call it Old Age? What? Yeah, I have that mode... But basically, it's basically like the previous, like the old game, which I have on the PC. Actually, I have the actual original Space Invaders anniversary collection on the PC. And then we have the New Age version, where you basically have to destroy aliens around the world, as you can see. Oh wait, no, that's oh wait, and you also have other weapons too, like as you can see, I have lasers, rapid wait, yeah, and stuff like that to make the game more interesting. And you fight around the world. Like you can see, there's one about America and New York. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's a pretty good game. It has two nice modes, and it's, and it's good for any old fans of this game. Animaniacs. Lights, camera, action. Yeah, basically... Yeah, Animaniacs, it's a freaking awesome series. I mean, like, one of the best cartoons ever made. I mean, I mean, it's really good, especially for its, like, jokes. I mean, like, they're jokes. They're very special kind of jokes, because, basically, they're jokes that you wouldn't get when you're young, but then when you're older, you'd get them immediately. That's what we in the trade call innuendo. Yeah, and this is a pretty interesting... It's a pretty decent game on the DS. Although it's not really... It's not the best one, but it's pretty cool. Me, per I personally prefer um, Great Edgar Hunt on GameCube, which I still have in my collection, and I got later on in my life. Basically, in this game, you have to you play as the enemy acts and Pinky in the Brain in the in the in movies. Yeah, and yeah, that's pretty much it. And the manual here. Here's the director. And yeah. I always like the anime axis faces there, look, there's Yakko Wacko and Dot over there. Yeah, this game, 
Actually, this game... Hang on, let me explain a bit more. You know, here's the characters. Some of the characters... One, the brain can't jump and Dot can't push. They're, that's mainly that's mainly made so that you so that all the characters don't feel the same. And Yakko can throw far farther further than the other Animaniacs. So, yes. And look, no, this screenshot actually looks like it's from looks has GBA aspect ratio by the looks of it. In fact, this looks like it's from a GBA from the GBA port. This was a GBA game originally. I think they might have ported it on the DS. Considering the fact that this game doesn't use the X button or the Y button, I'd kind of assume this was only that it was released on GBA first, and I kind of assume that too. Considering that this game uses a password system, yeah, I wrote down the passwords, but yeah, this game uses a password system, and for a DS game, that's not really meh, good. But I, the multiplayer in this game is pretty good, though. That's 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 something to say about it. So yeah. If you like any Maniacs, this is a good game. But I personally prefer the Great Edgar Hunt. Mario vs. Donkey Kong 2. March of the Minis. Now, basically, the second Mario vs. Donkey Kong game before they decided to make a lot of sequels. But they were still pretty good. I mean, I played in also Minis much again on the um, DSiWare. But anyway, yeah, this is a sequel to Mario vs. Donkey Kong on the Game Boy Advance, except this day is. This plays, except this plays quite differently from the first one. For one, you don't play as Mario in this one, you play as these mini Marios. And, yeah. I mean, I like I liked the idea of it. I mean, I always want to play this game, I have it now. And, yeah. It uses Wi Fi connection. I never managed to connect to Wi Fi connection ever. Because of the fact that um, I would just type down the internet codes wrongly. And I was like, you know, crap. I, I guess I screwed up again. And I'm, pr and I'm pretty sure I won't be able to... And never be able to connect a Wi-Fi connection. Because I'm pretty sure Wi-Fi connection is pretty much closed down. Unfortunately. So that way you can never play Brawl with your friends. Yeah, this game is pretty good. I mean, this game has FMV. Which uses, which is for the act image. For the, which uses act image, this game. And it's pretty impressive for how it is. Because like, it's on a cartridge and you can't really fit in... FMV on a cartridge, we mean we learned that with the Nintendo 64 and the PS1 next to each other. PS1 can play FMV, but N64 can't. But anyway, what else does this game have that's good? Let's see, good boss puzzles. Oh yeah, and a level editor, that's right. We can make your own levels on this. And I think this idea, along with the level editors for the rest of them, Mario vs. Donkey Kong series, inspired Super Mario Maker on Wii U. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, yeah. because um, I think Shigeru Miyamoto said some said one part that he liked in making the um, level editor on them using that he was always interested in making levels and sharing them, so he decided to put some level editor in here along with the rest of the Mario Donkey Kong games afterwards, and then Mario Maker came out. This is still fun. I mean, like nice puzzles and some pretty nice levels and nice designs too. Super Princess Peach. No? Don't say that. Don't say the fact that it's a girl's game, because that's pretty much sexist. I mean, I swear. I mean, boys can like girl things, too. Like, how do you explain bronies exist? Anyway, Super Princess Peach, yes. Basically, people were sick of the whole same story about Princess Peach getting captured by Bowser and all the... All yada, yada, yada. And so, because of this, they decided to... To do some royal role reversals. So Princess Peach is the main, is the hero, and Mario has to, is the one who you save, which is a pretty cool idea. And you know how this works? Well, you will see. We have these emotions, as you can see. Well, these emotions, as you can see. Well, before they made Inside Out, we have three Inside Out. We have three Inside Out emotions, and one um, one one would basically we have them. You know, is that what do you call them? Joy. Anger, sadness, and calm. Not, 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 not disgust. Even though it's green, but I don't care. Um, yeah, joy. Basically, can fly around and happily kill enemies and stuff and fly. Anger. You basically, when you like, when you like angry, you can pretty much um, stomp heavy. You're pretty much heavier, and so that way you can make cause a small earthquake. 
sadness. You basically cry tears and so and thus killing any anyways around you and calm that basically just replenishes your health if your health is low. Yeah. So yeah. This is different. You you play as Peach, not Mario or Luigi. Peach and you save toads. And you have and you have an umbrella as well. Called Perry. Who I think should appear in more games. You know, he's not even in any of Smash Brothers games. Not even after this game. Was this game made again? Oh yeah, 2005 or 2006 or so. Or 2006. Or something. Yeah. This is still a pretty good game though. And the mini games were in this game were awesome too. And the rest of the stuff. I mean, the music is good. And all the rest. And all the rest of the ideas simulated in this. I recommend you get this game. Sonic Rush. Yeah, one of my first DS games next to New Super Mario Brothers. Sonic Rush is the first Sonic game released for the DS. And as Nintendo, uh, official Nintendo magazine said, it's the best Sonic game ever. Yeah. Well, as much as I like this game, I wouldn't go as far as saying it's the best. I, I mean, I personally... I actually prefer Sonic 3 Knuckles and Sonic CD and Sonic Adventure 2 as better Sonic games than this, but this was still pretty good. Well, Sonic, this claims that Sonic Team developed it, but actually, um, they they actually kind of worked on it, to be fair, but Dimps actually developed this game because it's kind of running just as Sonic, Adven Sonic Advance. Yeah. I mean, it has some nice 2D. It, it, this game introduces Blaze the Cat, as well as them, um, you know, and this game also introduces the four kids voice actors. Well, this game and Shadow the Hedgehog, but yeah. This game is pretty good. I mean, it has like nice 2D um, sections for the old gamers, but it also has some nice little... People don't like the music in this game because, well, to be honest, I don't really make much of this music either because of the fact that, I don't know, J-pop or something. But this is still pretty good. You just advertised the Sonic Riders, which wasn't a fantastic game. But it was still a good, good game. Rayman Raving Rabbids 2. Yeah, I have the first one on the PS2 and the third one on the Wii. And I have this on the DS. Um, it's the first... No. It's the, it's the party game more, most fun on the GS. It's the most fun party game on your DS, says says Nintendo Action, which is basically a nice little Nintendo magazine that you can buy in Spain, which I usually get before I go home, which is pretty good. Anyway, this is a good game. I mean, like, I could have gotten the Wii version too, but I personally would have preferred a party game over a shooter game myself. So I'm about to say that, but I, I, it's true. Yeah, you can basically customize your rabbit, and even you can customize your rabbit, draw. And even record your own rabbit scream. You know, the one that goes, bah! and something that goes up. And you can actually play lots of mini games. You can play a sort of Guitar Hero game thing. And then we have, you can play lots of mini games, which are multiplayer, which is pretty good. And there's some pretty nice multiplayer mini games here too, which are, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, this is a pretty awesome game. So if you if you have a DS and have enough money, I suggest you get this. Metroid Prime Pinball includes Rumble Pack. This game comes with the Rumble Pack, and this is probably why it sold like hotcake. Well, mainly because that and it's a good game. Uh, but but basically, um, it's a, it's a pinball game, and you can basically it has some adventure elements apparently. Collect artifacts, battle bosses, and play minigames in this pinball game based on the Metroid Prime regions. You hit the drop targets to release Metroid in the 8 player Mario Risk game. And basically, peel each chicken bump through a special DS Rumble Pack. Yeah, this comes with the Rumble Pack. You know, the Rumble Pack that was kind of like the one on the Nintendo 64. Yeah. Except you couldn't use this Rumble Pack on the DSi or the 3DS. So basically, this, 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 this selling point is a bit, um, Irrelevant now, but it was still pretty good. I mean, it looks like a GBA cart, so basically, that's the reason why we couldn't play this game with some rumble features. It was still all. It was pretty pretty good. 
Scribble Knots. This game is freaking awesome. Anyway, um, actually, this game, this case isn't actually an official case. Um, I actually printed this out because when I bought this game at GameStop, it didn't come with the official case, so I had to print one out myself. I even printed out a manual too, as everything. Yeah, this was the original Scribble Knots. Yeah. And it's a pretty freaking awesome game. I mean, you can, like, write, you can write stuff down, and you can, and we can appear in the game. And then this ca and then the mechanic became better with Super Scribble Knots on the DS, and then Scribble Knots Unlimited for the Wii, for the Wii U, 3DS, and PC, which is freaking awesome. Although I have to actually buy that game on Steam, considering the fact that the one I have can't really use them, can't really use a Steam Workshop, which is which isn't really good. So I have to just use my own copy and wait for money for Steam, because that's pretty interesting. That's pretty important. Yeah. Anyway, I have this. Um, this is actually a, yeah. Basically, in this game, you can basically make your own, make your own stuff appear by actually typing it down. And here you go, get your stuff. Here's my manual. This poor me mate. Yeah, you can re just read the manual here yourself. It's freaking dumb. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Doesn't explain that much. Tricks. Top six tips. It has says tricks, but it doesn't look like it. So it says ticks. Looks like. So yeah, those are some tips. I mainly got this from a magazine, from the official Nintendo magazine, I think. But yeah, I have other titles, but they weren't even anything connected to each other except maybe Drawn to Life and Scribble Nuts. They were developed by the same people. But yeah. This game's freaking awesome. I suggest you buy it. And it's one of the best DS games out there if you can pick it up for a cheap price. And I should probably look for them Super Scribble Knots as well. Why are you aware? Do it yourself. Make it yourself, play it yourself, do it yourself. Basically, this is one of the best DS games out there. I mean, like. So much replay value, you can pretty much, like, make as many games as you like, I mean, yeah, so many games, and you can make games, music, and comics, all in this little package of a game, and it's freaking awesome, you can make micro games, and play them, and it's freaking great, yeah, this is a freaking awesome game, you can play, here you go, you can connect to the internet, and Download some more, and then hey, read this before you play. Never. Here is Penny. I don't think she. I don't know, but I. I was gonna say she might be introduced in this game. I thought. I uh, hang on. No, she didn't actually. She appeared in Smooth Moves, I think, on the Wii. Mm. Anyway, let's see. We have the map here and and some nice little interesting stuff. We have the Super Maker Matic Twenty One. It's a nice little games. And this is actually the first time I ever played Wario's micro games. And we learned that Ashley's micro games are food based. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Freaking awesome game. Wario's micro games aren't strange. Shin Chan Flipa en Colores. Basically, color flip. A flip in colors or something, I don't know. Published by 505 Games in Spain, well, it was only released in two countries, Japan and Spain, and actually I think it might be released in Korea as well, I, I don't know, I could check that later. Yeah, they didn't release every Shin-chan game in Spain, they only released the ones that they felt like releasing. I have one on the GB, I have the one on GBA, and I have, the, I have one on the Wii, and that's pretty much all the ones that I have. They released another one on the DS, but, and another one in the... Actually, there is two other ones in the DS, and the, another one on the GBA, so I might look for those when I, when I actually get any money to buy. But yeah, this is a pretty good game, and yeah, it plays a lot like the one... It plays a lot like the GBA game, like... Yeah, Van Presto, and... Inti Creates is a pretty good company that made this game, and, yeah. I like this game, it has a nice mechanic that basically you can, basically you can use them, use the colours to to progress in the game. And that's a pretty interesting mechanic, because you know, the fact that, yeah. 
I pretty mm-hmm. like this game. I mean, Shin Chan's one of my favorite animes ever, and yeah, having games of this of this is pretty awesome. Super Monkey Ball Touch and Roll. Yeah, basically the first Super Monkey Ball game on the DS. Um, yeah, Super Monkey Ball. If you don't know, is a is a is a puzzle game basically where you can where you lead your monkey to the goal by while having to go through levels of of tediousness, but good tediousness, of course. Yeah, it's a pretty fun game and it's pretty addicting, like all the rest of the Super Monkey Ball games. I mean, like a lot of them. Yeah, you can play as an I I Mimi. Baby and Gong Gong, like they could in the previous ones, and other ones too, yeah. So yeah, this is a pretty good game, and it's pretty addicting, and and a lot of the levels here are really hard too. So yeah, it's a pretty, yeah, if you love Super Monkey Ball, get this game, you will not be disappointed. It has nice mini games too, like the previous ones, yeah. And just advertise the Sonic Riders again. Sega just really loves to advertise Sonic Riders, don't they? Yeah. This game is freaking awesome. I suggest you buy it.